Hey guys, what's going on? Jen did Commando here, and today we're going to be reacting to India versus Pakistan. Who would win? It's a military comparison video that I've just uh, stumbled across on YouTube, and I thought it would be interested to uh, interested to know a little bit more about both sides, guys. It's a stats and figures type thing, so. A uh, little disclaimer, this is not my views, all right? This is just a video that I'm reacting to, to so in no way, shape, or form does this um, represent my own views, okay? I want to make that clear. But other than that, guys, have a fantastic one. I hope you enjoy. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let's go. It's the conflict that many have called a possible prelude to World War III, and one that's already played out multiple times over the last 70 years. India versus Pakistan, a clash of powers that if both sides fully committed to, would be the largest armed conflict since World War II. But yeah, and nobody wants that, guys. Trust me, all right? Which side really has the upper hand? And what would a conflict end up looking like between these two intense rivals? Mm. India and Pakistan's it's gonna be relationship interesting. is a rocky one, to say the least, with both sides feuding against the other ever since Britain pulled out of the region after World War II and created the two separate states. All matter of border and culture conflicts resulted in a neighborhood commonly called the most dangerous in the world, a potential conflict zone more likely to result in all-out war than even the borders between NATO and Russia or even China and Taiwan. Historically, Pakistan has suffered repeated defeats in its wars against mm. India, although it's also achieved key strategic smaller scale victories amongst the no man's land that borders the two nations. In the so the no man's land, um, uh, I might be wrong, and is, is, is Kashmir part of that land? Is that what they're talking about? I know there's a lot of trouble there. Early 2000s, a new security partnership with the United States made many Indians nervous, as it was believed such a partnership might lead to an influx of American military equipment and training, greatly improving the capabilities of the Pakistani military. Yeah. Soon, though, American intelligence officials realized that Pakistan was double-dealing them, aiding Taliban forces in Afghanistan, and even sheltering them from American strikes. Pakistan now... Which ain't a good thing, is it, guys? We all know the problems that occurred shortly after that. Um, yeah, that's not great. Never had any interest in the Taliban being ousted from Afghanistan, despite taking hundreds of millions of dollars from the U.S. for its cooperation. Well, that's for terrible. Pakistan, the Taliban was a vital strategic buffer between itself and Iran, whom hated the Taliban. It quickly became clear that the U.S. and Pakistan would not become close partners after all, and instead a growing relationship between the U.S. and India, the world's most powerful democracy yeah. and the world's largest democracy, put Pakistan... And a fantastic democracy it is, guys, all right? I'm very fond of India and the culture. ...on the back foot. Now the nation relies on its arsenal of nuclear weapons to fend off Indian forces and continues to finance and aid terrorists to strike against Indian targets across the border. For its What's your thoughts on nuclear capability then, guys? I mean, I've, I've got a kind of thought pattern on it. I think it's, it's almost pointless having if it's only used as a, a means to fend off war. If everyone just got rid of it, it would, the world would surely be a bit better place. I'm not sure. What's your thoughts? Let me know. Part, India's patience is running incredibly thin. And one more attack, such as that in Mumbai in 2008, which was coordinated by Pakistani intelligence, will almost certainly lead to a swift and overwhelming... Yeah, Mumbai 2008, we all remember that, guys. It was an absolutely horrific um, occurrence. All right, I remember exactly what happened that day, and it, was, uh, it wasn't, wasn't nice at all, guys. It should never have happened. Indian response. In case of a war, Indian forces are over twice as large as Pakistan's. With a Never knew that. With a made up of 1.444 million personnel versus 654,000. India's reservist pool is also much larger, with 2.1 million reservists able to be called up quickly into active service okay. versus Pakistan's 550,000. Never However, knew that. However, India's much larger size versus Pakistan's means Indian reservists will take longer to call up, equip, and mobilize to the front lines versus Pakistan. Mm. So Pakistani reservists will almost certainly be India's own to the front lines. This will put incredible pressure on India's active... Not really... So, you know, they've got 550,000 reservists. They're still going to take time to, uh, you know, equip them. So just the same as if, if India had the same amount of reservists, the fact that they've got more is a strong point. You can't, you can't take anything, anything away from that. This, these stats on the right are superior to the ones on the left. You know, logistics comes into it, but they'll have a bigger, a bigger logistics um, pool to, to play with. So I don't agree with that duty forces at the onset of war. India's defense budget is about six times larger than Pakistan's, with 61 billion versus 11 billion. Wow, that is incredible. 
That's a lot of money, troops. This allows India to operate far more mechanized forces than Pakistan, which only operates about two mechanized infantry divisions. The mm -hmm. difference is also in equipment, though, with India fielding overwhelmingly more modern equipment than Pakistan. India's Air Force is also much larger than the Pakistani Air Force, with 2,123 aircraft versus Pakistan's 1,372. India's That's still not bad for Pakistan, though. 13,000, nearly 14, uh, nearly 1,400 there. That's a lot still, guys. A lot. Fighter fleet numbers at 538 versus Pakistan's 356. Although in any conflict, Pakistan will almost certainly be fighting defensively. This would allow Pakistan's air artillery to help neutralize some of that numerical disadvantage. And in a defensive war, India's large number superiority will actually put it roughly on par with Pakistan's fighter fleets once losses and denial from air artillery is accounted for. Where India... Mm, not too sure about that either, guys, all right? Numbers and and better kit do do make a big difference. So regardless if someone's playing a defensive war or not, tactics will change on the ground. India's not just going to go crazy, you know. It's um, yeah, statistically, uh, I don't think that's right. I think it's um, any anyone's day. It can be a good or bad day, and um, it depends on you know a few factors. Certainly, the numbers of um, aircraft and the better aircraft. The skill of the air pilots um, and you know a little bit of luck as well. India truly holds the advantage though is in its fleet of 260 Sukhoi Su 30s, an extremely capable Russian fighter whose only real competition on the Pakistani side is the American made F 16. All right, a okay. modern F 16 yeah, yeah. is more than a match for a Su 30. Not many of Pakistan's F 16s are fully modernized. To uh, make matters worse, Pakistan F 16 only 76 of them. Most the F-16 is a brilliant, brilliant aircraft, guys. The Pakistani Air Force is made of Chinese or joint Chinese-Pakistani fighters, and Chinese fighter designs are generally accepted as being inferior to either Russian or American designs. In the really? air, India will definitely hold the advantage. India fields a transport fleet that's five times greater than Pakistan's own fleet, with 250 various transport aircraft versus Pakistan's 49. Backed up with a helicopter fleet that's twice the size of Pakistan's, with 722 helicopters versus 346. India has a crucial advantage in air. It's just huge. India's military is just huge. Air mobility that Pakistan can't match. This will make the movement of heavy equipment and infantry through the mountainous northwest border of India possible, and while easily defended, will favor an Indian offensive in the region. Air transport, though, will matter little to Pakistan as it'll be fighting a defensive war, hoping to bleed Indian forces, trading territory for casualties until the Pakistani army can counterattack. Still, the lack of mobility will mean Pakistani forces in the mountainous north will suffer greatly and likely be inevitably defeated. One area that Pakistan outshines India, it... Right, these stupid ads that keep on popping up, guys. Skip is in attack helicopters with Pakistan operating 56 American Vietnam era Cobras versus a fleet of 23 Indian attack helicopters. Pakistan would likely choose to use these in the mountain. Right. Why is India not got as many attack helicopters when they've got a bigger budget then? That's what I'd like to know. 56 attack helicopters, 23 for India. This north as they'll make supporting its forces in the difficult terrain much easier. If India does not properly equip its mountain infantry with manned portable air artillery... India's got a fantastic mountain um, mountain warfare unit, guys, all right? The, the training that they receive is phenomenal. It could face serious casualties, as Pakistani attack helos provide close air support. India's own fleet is so small, it'll have limited to no utility, being easy fodder for Pakistan's own air artillery. Both nations, however, have so few attack helicopters that their air fleets will become depleted due to casualties and equipment breakdowns within the first week or two of serious fighting. The bulk mm. of the fighting between the two nations will happen on land, and this means that the most important element of either nation's military will be its main battle tank fleet. Here again, India outnumbers Pakistan nearly 2 to 1, with 4,292 tanks versus Pakistan's 2,200. Both nations... Yeah, nearly double, guys. Its tanks vary in modernity, but both nations' tanks are mostly very capable platforms. India's main tank is the Soviet-built T-72, with modern upgrades, until Desert Storm, analysts feared that the T-72 would be a formidable threat to the American Abrams and the British Challenger. Mm -hmm. The short but intense war, however, showed that T-72s were all but utterly obsolete versus Abrams or Challengers. Scoring... The Abrams and Challengers are fantastic bits of kit, guys. They really, really are. Not a single kill in the entire conflict, wow. while American and British tanks decimated hundreds in return. 
Luckily, India won't be facing off against Abrams or Challengers in a war with Pakistan, as Pakistan's main battle tank is the Chinese-made Type 59. Basically a copy of a Soviet design, the Type 59 could not hope to cope with modern tanks performing even worse than a T-72 against modern American or British armor, mm. but it could still pose a threat to India's T-72s. On the whole, though, India's tank forces would outperform Pakistan's own, and the ground war would almost certainly go to India in a pitched battle. India's own artillery forces also greatly outnumber Pakistan's with over 4,000 artillery versus Pakistan's 1,226. This includes 266 multiple launch rocket systems versus Pakistan's 100, giving India far greater fire support capabilities than Pakistan. However, because yeah. Pakistan has the defensive advantage, its smaller numbers would initially not matter much. Yeah, but this video is assuming the defensive stance. Um, and we can't assume anything, really in the first few weeks of conflict. Once India was fully mobilized, however, the overwhelming pressure of so much combat equipment would inevitably break Pakistan's back, unless the nation could score decisive victories with bold counterattacks and push itself into India. India's navy is also far more powerful than Pakistan's navy, with 285 vessels versus Pakistan's 100. This includes one Indian aircraft carrier, with Pakistan fielding zero. The ability to project air power out to sea would make it suicidal for Pakistan to seek a naval confrontation yeah. with India. And Pakistan... Yeah, at the sea, guys, numbers really does matter, all right? And the, the Indian have, have got... The, the Indian's got the numbers. And an aircraft carrier to be able to deploy um, some of the aircrafts from sea, it's, uh, it's a no contest, really. ...and own ships would likely fight a defensive war close to the shore and not venture into the Indian Ocean at all. With zero destroyers versus India's 10 and eight submarines versus India's 16, Pakistan does not have a hope of winning a naval war. Nah. So how would a war play out? Oh man, Play come on, now. adverts, adverts. Join millions of players across the globe in massive battles on... Okay, ...between the Done. two nations. Who would win? India's inability to respond properly to the 2008 Mumbai terror attacks led it to completely rethinking its war strategy against Pakistan. The terror attacks were quickly traced back to the Pakistan intelligence services who had trained and equipped the terrorists. But the Indian military was unable to respond quickly enough to punish Pakistan for the attack without... Mm, that's interesting, guys. ...without taking massive casualties. That's because by the time the link was discovered, Pakistani forces had already moved into mm. defensive positions along the border with India. To prevent this from happening again, India focused on a warfighting concept it's calling Cold Start. The aim of Cold Start is to rapidly mobilize border forces to push into Pakistan and deny advantageous defensive positions to the Pakistani military. In effect, opening up a corridor for follow-on Indian forces to pour through. The most That's interesting, the guys. So before they, anything escalates, they're just pushing the troops to the borders, basically. Um, to be able to prohibit any movement on the on the other side. The important really cool. aspect of Cold Start, though, is to move rapidly enough and deep enough into Pakistan's territory that it'll deter the nation from using its tactical nuclear weapons arsenal against the Indian military. Currently, India operates under a strict no first strike policy and will only. Oh, I never knew that. So India won't strike first. I've heard a few of you guys comment in the, some of the videos as well that India's never attacked any any other country or military before they've always been attacked and then they'll respond and that's their kind of narrative they'll do it that way so it's um yeah it's an interesting concept guys it's a testament to the people of india really only use nuclear weapons in retaliation pakistan however understands that it is the inferior power to india and thus maintains a defensive first strike policy meaning that it'll use nuclear weapons in a defensive matter in order to fend off the superior indian military India's goal, therefore, is to push deep enough into Pakistan that it will deter the nation from using nuclear weapons on its own soil. This also means taking a limited number of objectives rather than going for a decapitation strike and eliminating the Pakistani leadership. Given the technological and numerological superiority of the Indian military, it's more than capable of carrying the strategy out, at least on paper. While India well, yeah, on paper, um, it's interesting that he mentioned that, and I'm glad he mentioned it because... Uh, you can have all the numbers and the stats and everything and it can be in your favor but it comes down to the individual um and and it's about individuals win these things and uh, it's the training the commitment and the spirit of the human um that i've found anyway in, in in the wars that have went by um you just have to look at the british for that reason you know the brits we've got a, um, a tremendous fighting spirit you know we haven't got the large numbers or anything like that but we've all seen 
um, how we perform and stuff like that and around, in and around the globe. So, yeah, it's uh, definitely the uh, it's definitely about individuals, I think. India has plenty of experience fighting against Pakistan. It has never executed such a massive offensive, and it is unknown if it has the experience, expertise, and equipment to pull off such a massive logistics-dependent operation. Mm. If Cold Start were to fail, it would be a strategic disaster for the Indian military, as it would leave Indian forces bunched up on the border and at the mercy of Pakistani nuclear strikes. Of course, that would inevitably invite a nuclear response from India, further escalating the conflict. If Cold Start succeeds, though, Pakistan would be all but neutralized and forced to come to a peace table under India's terms. Removing nuclear weapons from the equation only makes an Indian victory even more certain. And it's sure that without Pakistan resorting to large-scale use of nuclear weapons, it cannot hope to stand against India's military. With few friends on the international stage thanks to its sponsorship of terrorism, Pakistan is also unable to call upon powerful friends to help it in case of war. Although China might perhaps be interested in responding to Pakistan's call for aid. Given China's antagonistic relationship. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it, really? To see who uh, would be on your side in the event of. And that obviously definitely dictates, um, you know, how it would uh, work out in the future, you know? So, um with India yeah. and the fact that India sits right on China's juggler in terms of trade routes that pass through the Indian Ocean. Plus China is massive, absolutely huge. China's got a lot to gain from a military defeat and weakening of India. A Chinese intervention, however, would almost certainly draw an American one, coming to the defense of a strong international partner and fellow democracy. This would spiral the conflict from a regional one into a full-blown major theater war. While the end yeah. result would still almost certainly be a combined Indian-American victory, India's military would be hard-pressed to pursue offensive objectives in Pakistan and hold off Chinese forces long enough for America to respond. Luckily, there is little favorable terrain for a major ground offensive from China into India or vice versa. Mm. So India would have plenty of time to hold off Chinese assaults until American forces put pressure on China from the Pacific. In a stand-up one-on-one war, though, there's no doubt that India would win any conflict with Pakistan. Want to see more awesome military videos? Right then, troops. So that was that. Again, I just want to reiterate, guys, that this is not this does not in any way, shape, or form um, cater for my viewpoint. I have a neutral stance on all of this. All right, and um, yeah, it's just interesting to see how the stats would fare up. I didn't realize how big of a military India um, was in terms of compared to Pakistan, you know. And yeah, the numbers I think are too superior. Um, for Pakistan to really have any kind of say in a matter. All I would say on this is hopefully it never happens anywhere because, um, you know, a peaceful world is a better world as far as I'm concerned. And I do like the fact that India has a won't strike first attitude. All right. So they're not actively looking for conflict, which is reassuring, which is reassuring. But if you did like this video, guys, please drop it a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the notifications. If you want to speak to me or anyone in the community, we have a Discord link. It is in the description. Please go and check in with uh, the Discord. It's got a fantastic community there. It's brilliant. So, yeah, I look forward to seeing you guys there. And also, we have a Twitch account now, so we play games every night. If you want to see us um, live stream and gameplay every night, Twitch is the place to be. Make sure you follow us there. But other than that, guys, have a wonderful day. See you next time.